Hello, and welcome to the Feeling Good Podcast, where you can learn powerful techniques to change the way you feel. I am your host, Dr. Rhonda Borowski, and joining me here in the Murrieta studio is Dr. David Burns. Dr. Burns is a pioneer in the development of cognitive behavioral therapy and the creator of the new Team Therapy. He is the author of Feeling Good, which has sold over 5 million copies in the United States and has been translated into over 30 languages. His latest book, Feeling Great, contains powerful new techniques that make rapid recovery possible for many people struggling with depression and anxiety. Dr. Burns is currently an emeritus adjunct professor of clinical psychiatry at Stanford University School of Medicine. (laughs) Hello, Rhonda. Hi, David. (laughs) And welcome to all of our listeners around the country, around the world, throughout the galaxy. This is the Feeling Good Podcast, episode 374. Today we have two special guests, our beloved Matt May, whom we are always happy to have on our podcast. Hi, Matt. Hey, great to be back with you, Rhonda and David, and our other special guest. And our other special guest is becoming one of our favorite recurring (laughs) <laughs> podcast guest Mina. And today our topic is going to be on anger part two, and we're doing the outer dialogue. And Mina's here to provide some context. Great. Mina um, is becoming the goddess of anger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a, has a good ring to it. The goddess of anger. Uh, <laughs> very, very nice. Uh, yeah. Well, I thought I would read an an endorsement. It's a teeny bit long, but it's kind of con- sort of a little bit connected by someone named Sirkin, who's writing from Europe. And he said, I just wanted to thank you, David, because you have enlightened my life. I have had very strong obsessive compulsive disorder and anxiety disorders starting from my childhood. The countless symptoms have remained in for me for decades and I felt empty for many years. I really didn't know how to control my thoughts until I read your books, Feeling Good and When Panic Attacks. And after that, I started to listen to your podcasts of Feeling Good. I've just finished listening to the 48th one about relapse prevention. And after that podcast, I started to feel relief and the feeling of overcoming my enormously severe OCD, and anxiety disorder. I want to express to you my gratitude, which I can't exchange with millions of dollars. You're the one person that has enlightened me most of my life, and I want to thank you incredibly because of all that has happened. You've saved me, my moral life totally. And then he also sent you a second email that said, now I've watched the 66th episode of your podcast. And And I take it all back. (laughs) (laughs) right that would be me and um and one of the things you said which i heard as if you let your ego die you don't have to be afraid of and this sentence has fallen down into my brain like night lightning like lightning and it has eliminated 100 percent of my very severe OCD and general anxiety disorder, which I've been experiencing for the past 35 years. I feel that you are the most enlightened person throughout my life. And I wanted to tell you about the above mentioned transformation of myself that you caused for me. And I want to express my gratitude to you in such a way that I can't really find the appropriate words. Although I do think I have to disagree with him that he did find very appropriate words to express his gratitude. And it sounds like you had an enormous impact on him, David. Oh, yeah. Thank you. That's such a beautiful thing. And and some of these concepts, and by the way, I want to say that your audio goes in and out, Rhonda, a little bit. Uh, oh. And I'm not sure wh- why, but we'll we'll let you know if it, if it, if it keeps happening. Okay. But yes, sometimes, you know, there are certain concepts in team that uh, – you know, you can just state them and they sound simple, but they're really not. They're really very, very difficult to, to grasp. And then when you grasp them, it's kind of like seeing the Grand Canyon for the first time. It it takes your your breath away. And and there are different things that, that you might 
might suddenly see, but it's all about seeing something that you hadn't hadn't seen before, and that that death of the of, of the self. A lot of people are, are afraid. Oh, I don't want to have the death of myself uh, because it seems like you're going to lose something. But uh, when but what when when you experience the death of the self, uh, you, it's not the death of anything because you realize there was nothing there in the first place. Mm-hmm. But it's just a a, a a a certain kind of relief, and and for example, it can give you relief from uh, you know uh, worrying about about criticism, which is one of the things that causes probably just about the most distress for human beings is is, is almost anything in the world. But if 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 that that that's only because you're generalizing from the criticism to to yourself. Per, the, you you can't criticize David's self. You can only criticize things that David thinks or says or or, or does. And uh, David's filled with with flaws. Uh, I just my life is kind of an ongoing series of flaws and gaffes and errors, and people get pissed off at me right and left, uh, and often for for good reason. Uh, although that's quite rare. <laughs> <laughs> and and if if your self isn't at at risk you know if you don't feel like your self is being threatened just your thinking or the what you said was insensitive or you know what wasn't qu- quite correct or or whatever then you can just find the truth in, in what the critic is saying and use that as a chance to to deepen your relationship with with the other person that just just one example but you have to 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 really see it and because a lot of people think oh i really have a self and this is so important and i want myself to be special and i, I want to be superior and i don't want to be inferior and uh, and and so we we put a lot of our suffering comes because of illusions that, that that we have and once you see through the illusions it can be a transforming moment for your entire life and i think throughout history the a lot of sages have have commented on on that some people call it the, the moment of enlightenment or you can call it the uh, the moment of of recovery if you want to use a medical term but it comes as a whoosh uh if you're a christian you might call it being born again or something something like that and there are these terms that refer to something very gentle and quiet which is simultaneously thunderous and and monumental in in its impact so i'm I'm just babbling itself i read that endorsement in part because you've talked about in order to have this outer dialogue with someone that you're angry with there does have to be an element of a death of the self yeah, yeah, that, that that I love that, Rhonda. Would you, would you say that's accurate? No, not at all. Oh, okay, maybe, <laughs> maybe I can get that too. <laughs> and yourself is no good. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was a really beautiful statement, Rhonda. To to totally, yeah. Uh, but I guess it's part of the arrogance of being human and the narcissism of humans. The thing we we have this all this self, special self. And myself is better than yourself, and that's a lot of the cause of all the depression in the world and all the anger and hostility and violence in in the world. And we see so much of that these these days. But if you don't get the meaning of these statements, then they, they just seem like a lot of philosophical psychobabble. I like what you're saying a lot, David, and uh, I've also appreciated how you've uh, at times differentiated between uh, the death of the special self Mm -hmm. versus the death of the blaming self. And I think you would, uh, that you've also said that the, the former is a bit easier. It's easier to let go of the sense that we need to be special because we'll get relief instantaneously. Whereas letting go of the blaming self is a bit harder because we kind of like to blame other people yeah that, that that's right that that's uh and that, that's why anger is so addictive because it feels good to feel morally superior and think that we have selves that are better than the other person's selves and look down on other people as shabby and second rate and see ourselves as the victim of their of their bad bad behavior 
And so um, last time we talked about the inner and outer dialogue when it comes to anger. And last time we focused on the inner dialogue and all the cognitive distortions that are involved in anger when you're angry or there's a blame, uh, blaming the other person, labeling them uh, as as inferior or as some politicians sometimes do, as, as vermin. My political enemies are, are vermin. Uh, Hitler did that too in World War II. Um, and uh, and then there's emotional reasoning. I, I feel angry, therefore you must be doing something bad. Or I I I I, I feel pissed off, and I, I I feel like you're you're trying to take advantage of me, and therefore you really are. That's in mind reading is another one. You think you know the other person's motive and and mindset when in fact you you probably aren't reading them exactly correct and then you know blame uh, other blame should st statements you shouldn't be that way this person has got no right to to believe that has got no right to think that way uh, you know he he he's a jerk she's a jerk that's all the inner dialogue stuff we also talked about the motivational co component that uh, be, before you can re reduce your anger, you, you have to, uh, as, as you pointed out a few minutes ago, Rhonda, and if listeners don't remember, it's because you said it before the podcast started. Oh, which is a good reason that they wouldn't have heard it, <laughs> but, but that you always have to do some kind of agenda setting intervention, like a cost benefit analysis. What are the advantages and disadvantages of getting close to this person? What are the advantages and disadvantages of blaming them? What are the advantages and disadvantages of, of feeling angry and, and, and so forth? And, um, and, and so once you've gone over, Th those hoops, and maybe you've talked back to some of your distorted thoughts, then the question is, how do you express anger? And and we'll give a beautiful example of that with, with Mina, uh, who, who really will bring this to life for us. But, but essentially, what would Rhonda and Matt and Mina say, what are some of the characteristics of unhealthy, aggressive anger, where you're attacking the other person, and healthy uh, anger, where you're sharing your other person. What are the the differences in the goals of healthy and unhealthy anger, and what are the differences in in in, in the way, in in, in the words that you would use or the affect that you would use? The first thing that comes to mind for me is the intention uh, behind it. Is my intention to try to change that other person, or put them down, or make them feel bad? force them to see my point of view, something like that, or is my intention to provide some information about my emotional experience that could improve the relationship? Am I um, uh, offering, some, offering something that is intended to improve the relationship and make the relationship better, or am I trying to change that other person? But Matt, I love that. Yeah, that's that's really cool. I would go further with that, that the intention uh, is not only to change uh, the, the other person, but to hurt the other person, mm. to, to humiliate the, the other person, to, to, to prove the other person wrong. Uh, to control you know, them. To control yeah. them, to, mm. uh, to, to get revenge uh, on, on them. I like that, David. I think that's true. Yeah. And what so, are some other goals of, of, of healthy anger? One is to improve the relationship. What other goals would be associated with healthy anger? Potentially just being genuine and honest. Vulnerable, vulnerable yeah. I, I well, can think of another dichotomy, though, before, um, is that an unhealthy anger is often impulsive and and expressed without much thought to it. I and a, a healthy anger might be expressed with some patience. Yeah, and thought and thoughtfulness. And thoughtfulness. Um, yeah, and um, and I think that um, and there are exceptions to all of these things, and they're all will differ from situation to situation. But I think another goal of of healthy anger is when you say improve the relationship. That sounds kind of clinical. Uh, like you're going to help some defective person or something like that, or 
but but to to I, I think to to develop a loving, close, respectful relationship would be the goal a goal in in healthy anger. Uh, uh, although you wouldn't have to have that goal, you you could want to express uh, healthy anger to to someone that you don't want a terribly close relationship. You don't want a loving relationship. Uh, but it would still be then getting back to your com uh, comment, Matt, to improve the, the, the relationship would, would be a perfectly acceptable goal. Well, um, what about to um, create optimism about the relationship? Yes, uh, yeah, that the healthy anger there, there, there is an an optimism, uh, a, a, a belief in yourself and the other person that's benevolent. We have the capacity to 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 feel close and and to respect one another and to work together to mm -hmm. to trust one one another. And then in 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 unhealthy anger, there there's a kind of a uh, hopelessness. Uh, you know, this person will never change, so I'll just kind of tell them off. Mm -hmm. uh, type of thing and tell them to go piss on themselves or something like that. Um, I want to add something else to, and again, it might be a different reason to be angry or not angry, but I also find in the two sides of the angry parties, there is also this intense desire to be understood. Mm. And often anger is a way of getting the attention of the other side who's not paying attention to pay attention and to hear you out um, in order for you to be understood. Yes. Uh, so um, so in healthy anger, you have a desire to, to understand the, the other person's mindset. In an unhealthy anger, you have the urge to sell them on your own point of view and, 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 and put them down, like prove that they're wrong. That they don't understand you and that yeah. you're right. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 right. Uh, and, yeah, and this is quite a list. Sometimes when you express anger, underneath the anger is hurt, and mm -hmm. eventually you can get to expressing your hurt and pain. Yeah, often is, mm -hmm. and that might bring you closer. Yeah, I love that. So we could say that the willingness to be vulnerable is a part of healthy anger. Mm -hmm. Uh, to to share the the the, the hurt the, the loneliness uh, and so forth. Um, because yeah, some, go ahead, Matt. Sorry. Oh, um, another another possible differentiation between healthy and unhealthy would be like: is it is it a collaborative process? Mm -hmm. where we're we're curious about you know what we might have done to contribute to the problem and what we could do better, or is it really just sort of focused on what the other person uh, should should change oh yeah i love Ooh, that great you know we could we could make an, a nice checklist with these contrasting probably about 10 10 differentiations well I, everything that everyone is saying so far is is tremendous uh to my way of thinking but there's they are, there's an old saying there's a wide gap between the cup and the lip and I never know what that meant because it's not that far. If you're drinking coffee, you just bring the coffee to your lip and tilt it and it tastes good in the morning. But at any rate, I think, what what does that mean? I have no idea. <laughs> the wide slip between the cup and the lip. Uh, I guess it means you're not supposed to spill your coffee on your pants or something. <laughs> but at any rate, I think what it means is we can talk about these things in beautiful, elegant terms and make a poetic list of characteristics and people can read it. And then how helpful will that be to people between zero and a hundred? Not, not in a practical way. Yeah, yeah, right. And so in, in a, and and I guess another characteristic is is in healthy anger you're you're kind of using the five secrets of effective uh, c communication. Uh and uh, uh you know finding truth in the other person's point of view, acknowledging their feelings, using inquiry to learn more, stroking, showing some some respect for the person even if you're both pissed off at, at, at each other and then an unhealthy anger it's like what you were saying Rhonda just kind of impulsive you know you know it's more like a boxing match to you mm -hmm. know 
just uninhibitedly flailing your arms and trying to knock the other person out with your truth-filled boxing love or something like that. But um, but the, the thing is to, is to, to practice that, and that's where the death of the self comes in, be, because you have to be willing to take feedback and and to see that even when you're trying to do healthy anger that it, it can be very, very challenging. And and that's why I was so grateful to you, Mina, to come onto the podcast and see if we could recreate the dialogue we had on a Sunday hike about 10 days ago or nine days ago, because I thought it was a, a beautiful example. And can you tell us a little about that from from your perspective and kind of the issue with your mother that we were we were trying to kind of kind of work on that day yes so um a few couple of weeks ago I was having a phone conversation with my mom and she was telling me about a a conflict that she had my mom rarely has conflicts with other people anger is um one emotion that she absolutely dislikes and goes out of her way to to avoid it uh, as much as possible. So she had a conflict with uh, with someone who got really upset with my mom for something she had done. And as she was describing it to me, um, I I could see how the other person got really angry and upset and kind of lost it. So I I told my mom that you know I I can see how it happened. And as I was describing it to to my mom, she goes like, "You're just like her, you know. You have always um, um, you've always hated me since you were really little. You know, you the way you would like look at me uh, was just like so much hatred in your in your look. And I would tell your dad, you know, like I think she hates me. Um, and then your dad say, "No, it's like I don't. She doesn't hate you. But yeah, I think you you always have." Let me stop and, for just a minute because yes. what you said was so powerful, and I got a little behind in writing it down. So, what uh, you, you, what your mother said, you always hated me, or something. What was it she yeah, said you, to you? You have always, you have always hated me since you were little. Uh, you'd always, you know, look at me in, in, you know, like your 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 look was full of hatred, and you would you still get really upset and angry with me, um, and. Um, um, Oh, I, I think before that, I told her that it's true that, like, you are the only person who manages to get me upset the most. Like, I never get angry, this angry with anyone else to this degree um, as I get upset with you. And then in response to that, she said, you've always, you've always hated me. So for my mom, anger and hatred are also equal to each other. If you are upset with her, it means that you're also hating her. Yeah, I think that's another characteristic of healthy versus unhealthy anger. And, and unhealthy anger, it's either love or hatred, uh, and, and you can't have both at the same time. But in healthy anger, you, you you can love someone and still be intensely angry with them, that they can be mm -hmm. integrated uh, t together. So she said to you, you've always uh, hated me since you, 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 were, you were little. Uh, you, you, even then, you looked at me hatefully. Uh, mm -hmm. And and we have that in photos of you when you were little. You you you've always uh, you, you you yeah you you've always hated me. We already wrote that down, so I'll cross that out. And do you have any of those pictures of yourself as a little girl? Uh, I do. I yeah, I can share it with you afterwards. Yeah, and then we can yeah. use it for the photo for the for yeah. the episode. <laughs> The I hate, think I look hate, pretty serious, but the, not the, not hateful. The hate the hateful daughter, <laughs> a hateful two month old Nina. <laughs> but you know that you. when you came on the podcast before, I think to talk about your relationship with your husband, you said your parents were the two closest people to you in your life. I know and, my jaw dropped, and my mom told me that. Uh, it was it was such a shock because I always up to that point thought that, you know, I had a really, you know, like close relationships and my fa my mom was like my best friend. Despite me getting again for me, like anger and hatred don't are not are not the same. Um, I also have to say the angry feeling to me is just as unpleasant as as anxiety or feeling anxious or panicky. I just hate that 
you know, rising, you know, my heart rate, my body temperature, the tension that I feel, it's a very uncomfortable feeling. And I think as part of that is like anything can help me to, to unload <laughs> and kind of get rid of that physiological um, response that, the, you know, with anxiety, there is really not much I can do when I'm feeling anxious. It's just there. And until I kind of figure it, something out, it's, it's like there, but anger is something that if I express it, it goes away. Uh, so there is this kind of feedback loop, unfortunately, that exists and has existed probably for as long as I have, that if I express it, it goes away and I feel better, uh, which probably, you know, has resulted in me not expressing my anger or not learning how to express it properly. Either I suppress it and David knows I end up with hidden emotion and comes up in the weirdest possible <laughs> ways, uh, like neurological symptoms when I suppress it. And when I don't, it's not very pleasant uh, to to anyone around me. So uh, and myself, you know, I have to then deal with the consequences of the hurt that follows. Mm -hmm. Beautifully stated. Um, and and so um, one way to conceptualize what we're going to do now. Uh, 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 let me just finish writing down. Um, so we'll to 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 make a, a practical exercise, uh, the kind of thing that our, our users could could practice with. It it's it, it just the same as with any other interaction with something with someone. What what did the other person say, and 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 what did you say next? But in this case, we'll say and and what would you like to say next? See if you can respond to to mom's statement. You, you, you've you always hated me since you were little. Uh, you, you, you even looked at me uh, hatefully would, would be the statement. And then how, how are you going to respond to that? And you can take your best shot and then we can grade it and say, here's what we liked. Here, here's what we didn't like. And we have to warn the listeners that we worked on this going back and forth on the hike, <clears throat> I'd say for, for a good half hour, wouldn't, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Um, and with gradual improvement with each role reversal and trying again, but it, but, it, but it was slow sledding. And then that's why I wanted to have this podcast is to show that it takes a lot of practice along with a lot of motivation to learn right. how to express your own anger uh, in a loving and skillful way. And also to acknowledge how, how the other person is 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 feeling, and so you just have one person. In this case, will play the role of mother, and then Mina can play the role of of Bina, and then we'll critique it and say, "Here's what worked, and and here's what didn't work," and then we can try a role reversal and keep trying until till we get uh, an A or or an A plus. Does that sound okay, Nina? It sound okay. I want to add one additional you know, piece of information in there. So between the time we practiced, I was ready to go and find a time to talk to, to my mom. And yesterday I had a day full of clients. So in the morning I saw on my phone this little uh, flash screen, like, you know, a message from my mom, I love you so much. You know, I, I miss you so much. I wish you all the way. Like a very lovey-dovey message. Uh, on WhatsApp. And I said, okay, I need time to respond. Given all that has happened, I don't want to kind of say I love you too. You know, I want to put thoughts into it. And um, and before I got a chance to respond, I don't know, you know, um, Randa, you might know on WhatsApp, you could delete your message. So at night I went to respond and my mom had deleted her message. Oh, uh, she did. Yeah. So I kind of like it was just punched to my to my gut I didn't get a chance to respond I I got upset again and hurt and then I wrote her and I said like there was this message that I saw come in and before I got a chance to respond you deleted it what happened and she goes old age I did it by mistake mm. so it's this is this is this morning so you know it, it the drama continues um I don't know if we want to talk with that or the, it, it just, so I, again, I, it, it was kind of, kind of an upsetting thing that added to it. Um, 
So I'm I'm upset again. Mm -hmm. oh, and hurt. That, that will make it a little bit of a better practice experience. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, Is there a part of you that doesn't believe her explanation? Oh, 100%. I don't believe her explanation okay. at all. Yeah. So, uh, so let's focus in here. And thanks for that additional excellent bit of information. And that, that, that's why these things are hard as life is constantly throwing us curveballs and un unexpected things. Um, my suggestion, but it's not the only way to do it is let's first do you, you, how do we respond to mom saying you've always hated me since you were little. And, and then the second, once we get to an A on that one, we could try getting to an A on how we'll message we'll send to her currently. Right. Would that work? Yes. Yes, for sure. So I'll start with the first one, you know. Um, and so who do you want to be your mom? You have, you can have Matt or Rhonda. And Matt, well, Matt can, can speak in a soprano voice whenever he can do it on command. <laughs> so either would work. I think that might be a little distracting, but I'm, I'm happy to play, play your mom. Uh, Mina, sure, Matt, like. go, go <laughs> ahead. Um, You're you're just like her, uh, and and you've always hated me since ever since you were little. Ups, you know. Um, Slow down a little, mom. You are. I'm. I'm shocked to hear that. I feel I feel shocked um, and surprised to hear that. But I can also see your point you you mentioned that you know i've i've hated you since you were little and um you're you're right in that i do get upset with you frequently and i get angry and i express my anger to you more than probably i express it to anyone else in in the meanest ways and i feel i love you and i feel ashamed and embarrassed of my of the way I, I react when I'm upset with you. And also I feel hurt to um to first hear this, but also at other times for not really being understood by you. And I also on the other side I can imagine how you might have felt unloved, rejected maybe even like you know when i get angry with you inferior um defeated i know how much you don't like the feeling of anger and how much you've tried to teach me to be kind and peaceful so how disappointed you might feel as a mother too and worry about me also in terms of like how i would function in my in my life if i if i can't communicate in a loving compassionate way and i also yeah i wonder if you can tell me more about how your experience has been dealing with my outbursts and you know being mean to you and i'm hoping that by you sharing this I was really unaware of this, so I'm glad that you you brought it up, and I'm hoping that we can we can work through things out and maybe explore together, you know, how we can communicate in a in a more loving way. Although you have always been communicating in a loving way, so for me, for but I would love to hear from you how how it's been for you. Okay, great. No, I want to do stroking too. You've always you are you are always very considerate of other people, um, trying to not hurt anyone and being kind to them, and you go out of your way to to really care for for anyone that I have known. A lot of people know you as an angel and refer to you as an angel, so it's um, it it must be really painful to not receive the same treatment okay what grade do you do you give yourself 
Probably an A minus. It was very long. <laughs> okay, so let's, let's see what uh, what Matt thinks and what Rhonda thinks. You can ask them. Yeah, Matt, what what grade do you give me as the as the mother who received this? Yeah, thank you. I I think I would probably be giving you um, an A. Um, things that I really liked. I, I'm glad that you came back for the stroking at the end. Um, I liked your um, I feel statements where you were talking about feeling shocked, surprised, but also ashamed. And um, I think I would have, if in that moment, I wanted more of a focus on my feeling of feeling kind of angry and mm -hmm. in, yeah. in that moment. Um, I can't believe I forgot that. <laughs> yes. And more of a disarm around how I had kind of taken the other person's side and criticized her, uh, criticized my mom, mm. and because she was kind of talking about a conflict that she was in, and I would have wanted that to be disarmed, that I did that just then, not only in my childhood, but also in this one moment in time, I was kind of criticizing her yeah. when, when she was opening up and telling me about a really upsetting situation uh, yeah. that had occurred for her. Yeah. Um, but I really liked your inquiry. I liked how it was uh, made clear that the reason that you were glad that this conversation is coming up. So you have a chance uh, to clarify how much you love her and care about her. Um, I thought there was a little bit of problem solving, like let's get to like solving the problems in our relationship as opposed to just hearing about it. But you did that too. Uh, you also focused on what, what is this like for you? I really liked that question a lot. Thank you. And Rhonda? I would also give you an A, I, Mina. I really loved it. I I loved that you were able to balance your feelings and say both that you were shocked and surprised and ashamed and embarrassed and hurt. I cringed a little when you said you're right. I get angry frequently because, and this is just a subtle nuance that I might be interesting to talk about. She, she said, you've always hated me. And you said, you're right. I get angry frequently. And there is a little disconnect. And, um, you know, we talk about not disarming a distortion or a, de a delusion. And I think it's your mother's distortion that you've always hated her. For sure. And so I, I kind of like what Matt said about, you know, disarming well you're right i did agree with this other woman uh, and and following up with that um but i i loved everything else that matt said i liked your stroking i like how you said you know a lot of people have referred to you as an angel it must be painful not to receive that same treatment in response i thought it was really beautiful you know your compassion really came forward thank you and david I gave it an A also. I thought it was just, just terrific. And we live in a world where a B is way better than what anyone's ever heard from anyone. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's so far beyond that. I'm, I'm just dying to find out how, how what, what happens. I, I guess there were some fine points there and I didn't quite understand what each of you were, were saying there. I think Matt, you wanted, uh, uh, Mina to disarm her mom's something about her conflict with this other woman at the at the beginning. Uh, I, I think I think that's what you would were saying that you could have provided more support for her concerns about some conflict she was having with 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 another woman, and maybe uh, acknowledged. I think that you Matt you said that to acknowledge more her, her mother might be feeling angry. Was that correct? Right. That I, my understanding was that uh, um, Mina had said something like, I can see why this other person was angry with you, mom. And so it was sort of taking, oh, uh, I see. Yeah. taking the other person's oh, side oh, and being yeah. critical right. of, of mom. Oh, yeah. Uh, and that that would be angering. And that if we just acknowledge, yeah, I think I let you down there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. That, yeah. Good. 
Good, yeah. But uh, I think that that shows a lot of the work that uh, you you did on Sunday and 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 since and since then. Why, why don't we try uh, now the the other one? Now your your mom has uh, do, get, sent you a loving comment, and then uh, and, and then deleted it. And uh, so what, what what are you going to say say to her? And then we'll we'll crit- critique it again if that's okay with you. Uh, yeah uh that one is a little harder because i again i wrote her and i said you know what what happened why did you delete your message and uh, matt you weren't here for that so i my mom sent me a message yesterday morning it was a very loving message i love you i care so much about you and and i had a lot of clients what was working and i thought you know given all that's happened i can't give a quick response so anyways i just before i responded my mom deleted um the message so i asked her why she did it and she said it's because of the old age and i haven't responded yet um this was this morning i saw her message that i did it you know by mistake um as an as an old age mistake so um i what would i say i think i need help with this one i don't know how to initiate the conversation um I, I kind of I'm thinking perhaps I need to call her instead of writing her back and if I call her also what she told me later on in the conversations we've had before is like I talk with my other friends who have kids your age and we all agree that, you know, your generation who were born in Iran and are your age, you have suffered so much, you know, you have experienced so much trauma and you have suffered so much that all of you are very, very angry and very um, disappointed in us. And in so many ways, you we were going um, ourselves through so much that you were neglected and we weren't really aware of you. So I, we can see how you were all kind of experiencing the same and then she also told me other things that I didn't know. For example, at the time that my my dad was constantly being pulled into courts for interrogation because of the leadership role he had prior to revolution. So I, I didn't know some of the things that they were going through. So in hindsight, again, it makes sense that I was feeling, I, feeling angry with her because I was feeling neglected and like I wasn't having her attention, but she was dealing with like, whole life death type of thing happening in their daily lives and so was my dad so um kind of acknowledge it, it, this was like a little bit of a without me even trying to do the five secrets it was her coming halfway to say I don't blame you for for being upset and angry with me it seems that all my other friends who have children your age are experiencing the same. So starting the conversation seems that it's almost like she closed the door for me to go and and have this conversation uh, or the opportunity. Um, And I don't know how to restart it again. Okay, so would you want uh, Matt or Rhonda to, to, to model that? Yeah, yes, that would be awesome. So, well, shall I do it since Matt did the last role play? Yeah. Matt, do you want to? I wanted to hear Rhonda's voice. Mina, can I just make sure I understand what you're saying? You, at some point recently, or maybe not so recently, you you did talk mm-hmm. to your mother, and she said that she has talked to people and friends her age, and and together she and her friends have concluded that 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 her generation of parents is realizing that because of their reactions to the revolution and their emigration and the the trauma they experienced through the Iranian revolution, that your generation of children were neglected. Right. So did that conversation happen before the clash that you had with her? No, it was after. So like, you know, it was, I think she realizes she's a very perceptive, probably one of the most perceptive people that I, that I know. Like if, if your tone is, off she knows how you're feeling for anyone I had a little puppy and my mom could read the puppy about like all all the needs of the puppy and basically like attend to the puppy like uh, like no other person that I've ever seen so um she kind of figured out that I was probably hurt and she before I even got a chance to talk about this she basically told me 
that I've had this conversation with friends. So that was after she had told me that I have that always needed her. her. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And before she deleted the the message. Before she wrote and deleted the message. Right. Yeah. Okay. So she wrote that and then sent another uh, message of how much she loved you, which which she deleted. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, ready, Mina? Yes. <laughs> All right, Mom. It was so meaningful to me when you talked to me about how your generation of parents experienced the trauma of the revolution and how it affected your parenting. And I really want, I really have so much respect and love for you that you shared that with me. You're, you're so insightful and you always know how I'm feeling, even when I don't know how I feel. And I, I really appreciate that and admire that about you. Thank, I want to really thank you for having that conversation with me. I also want to say that I loved the email that you sent me through WhatsApp. I just, I was, I just felt so warm and, and happy that I got that email from you and really grateful. And I was super busy the day I got it and didn't have a chance to respond immediately. And I also didn't want to respond too quickly without thinking about it. Cause we haven't really talked about that other clash that we had when you told me that, that you thought I always hated you. And that was such an important conversation for us to have. And so then in the morning when I, I went to look at that beautiful WhatsApp and, and it was deleted, I, I really felt hurt, honestly. I felt hurt and really confused and honestly a little irritated um, when I asked you where it went. And you said, oh, that was old age. You know, it pains me to say this, but I kind of didn't really believe you that it was old age. And I really thought you did it on purpose. And I want to check in with you and 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 talk about it some more because I love you so much and I'm feeling both warm and confused. And like I said, I'm wondering how you're feeling and if we can, and if you can tell me what it was like that I didn't respond to immediately, you know, the deletion of, and of that WhatsApp or what really happened to it, because all I really want is to get back on the same page with you. And, you know, I've considered you one of, if not my best friend, most of my adult life. And I really want to get back onto that page. So can you tell me what's been going on for you in our relationship so that we can continue dialoguing and resolving it? <laughs> I don't like the ending. That was a problem solving, but okay. Okay. Say, say it again. Cause I got so, uh, I started daydreaming probably for the same reason. So I didn't even hear what you said. Oh, because I was talking too much. Well, um, just at the end, the thing at the end. Um, I just want to say I really love you, and I want to get back to the place where we're best friends again. So I oh, want to hear I everything, see. what it's like, what it's been like for you to have this clash with me. Can you tell me more about that? I thought that was awesome. I almost cried in the the beginning part. That was awesome. Oh, thanks. What could I have done better? Just be just before we do that, let's say what 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 was uh, really good about it, uh, Mina. What brought you it to was tears? very it was very um authentic and and genuine and kind at the same time it wasn't uh it wasn't blamey at all um even the part that you said you know you did it I don't quite really believe you <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't like accusatory it was just like very kind of almost your experience of how you see it um and then all there was a lot of stroking in there um, as well, and understanding and and empathy about what they have were been going going through. Um, there was thought empathy, feeling empathy, a lot of stroking. There was definitely I feel in there. Um, I don't think there was a need for any disarm. Mm -mm. and uh and the inquiry was a little bit on the kind of troubleshooting mm -hmm. side but if you take one sentence out mm -hmm. it's like to get on the same page i think i think it was all it had all the elements you're right yeah and um what 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 are the take home messages for our podcast listeners here aside from you know come by on be nice which isn't going to go very far for people 
<clears throat> but what what is what is it we're 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 trying to convey to people who may ha have have trouble dealing with someone who's angry or trouble you know expressing your, your own anger One, one point that you've you've hinted at already, David, is just like it takes a lot of practice and willingness to fail and get feedback and then try again in order to develop these skills that it's a bit like learning a foreign language. Mm -hmm. And um, we can't expect just to have an intellectual understanding of it uh, that we would have to also you know, practice and get feedback and, uh, in, in order to improve these skills. Yeah, and there's two two ways to practice and get feedback. So you may be just want to be a passive listener, f podcast fan, and and not do your homework, and that's perfectly okay as long as you tell a lot of other people to tune into our podcast. <laughs> 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 but um, there's there's two ways you can practice. When I was developing the five secrets, and I mentioned this before, but I'll mention it again. I would write down something that say a patient said to me that if I was angry with the patient or the patient was angry with me or both, and then what would I say next using the five secrets? <clears throat> and I think I came up with something pretty good. And, and then, and I did this on paper and then I'd look at what I wrote an hour or two later and say, wait a minute, that really sucks. And, and, and I would revise it <laughs> to make it better. And usually I had to revise statements three, four, five, six times before I came up with something that was really good. Over time, I got better at it, but I still have to be very careful and work at it. And I still say things that people tell me piss them off. It happened just, just this morning, as a matter of fact. Uh, someone wanted to consult a, a patient and... Uh, and I gave tonight in our Tuesday night group on how to help difficult patients you're stuck with, and she didn't like the tone of something that that I had that I had said, um, and so I had to you know correct that. But but it, but you have to practice, and you can also practice with a friend or with a family member. What did the other person say, and what did you say next? And you may be thinking right now, oh, that, that would take too much time. I don't have the time for that, but I do like listening to the podcast. And it, it, you have, that, that's perfectly understandable and per perfectly okay. But you're, you're not going to be able to learn this skill w without the written or, or role play practice or, 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 or both, because it's like, it's like learning to play the piano. And I've said this a zillion times, but you, you can't just look at a piano and it won't start playing itself. You can't just sit down and pound on the keys. You've got to learn how to play the piano. You've got to practice, practice, practice. You've got to be willing to to to, to fail. Um, what was your feedback, Matt, on on uh, the uh, uh, Rhonda's uh, statement there? Maybe, maybe you gave it to us already, but... Oh, I, I really like... Uh your statement, Rhonda, I would give that an A. I like the stroking, the I feel. Um, I thought there was maybe an opportunity to talk more specifically about the dynamic where the message got deleted and how um, I think you mentioned that made you feel a little bit irritated. Uh, I think I might have, if I were um, Mina's mom, wanted to something like the disarm in that moment. Like mm -hmm. I wondered if maybe my long delay in responding to your very warm, uh, kind, loving message may have been hurtful to you. I wondered if that was an example of a time where I let you down and that, that you might've even, even felt kind of angry with me mm. in, in that moment. Um, and, and for good reason uh, that that would make sense to me and maybe like I was kind of mind reading that maybe you deleted the message because it, it felt kind of vulnerable in that moment or you're angry with me. Oh, Matt, thank you so much. Yeah, that makes sense. That's really great feedback. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. And, and, and you always have to finish with the person who's trying to get the help doing the final role play. And, and so uh, you, you now, Mina, are going to play the role of Mina and uh and tell us what what you're going to 
say to your mom, and then we'll give you a grade and critique it. And you can do it on the phone or you can do it through an email. That's your choice. Sounds sounds great. Let me let me do that. I did I did want to say something here that what I find really interesting here between when I I have the skills for doing five secrets. And again, like David said, even if you if I start is often a B. What I find fascinating is it, it's a lot easier for me to tell you about the good qualities of my mom and what a wonderful person she is than to actually say those same words to her and to also express my more tender emotions to you than to share it with my mom. There is this kind of fear. I don't know what I'm scared of doing in that instance, but I am. It, it is that's happening. And in my mind, I'm wondering for anyone who's listening to the podcast, if it will be helpful as a practice to pretend that they are describing the situation to one to friends, to, to a loving friend, you know, you don't bring that anger and frustration to to your friend when you're describing a situation. And the fact that I have, you know, so you, all of you who are loving and supportive and willing to help me allows me to tap into those softer emotions that if I'm in a tense situation, it will be harder to to get there. So maybe the practice would be to to practice it with loving people who will give you the space and understanding. So then the kind of softer things come out and then you know that they exist and then you can use them. So I'm going to go to the practice there. Well, just just, just to, to double check on that thing there, what you just said is that Sometimes, sometimes the important winning strategy is is to uh, share your vulnerability rather than putting up a wall with your anger and trying mm-hmm. to put the other person down or, or 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 push them away, and that requires trust. And mm-hmm. and 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 because you trust us, it, you can you can do it in a role play. You have a better chance to do it in a role play to be vulnerable. Than with than with your mom because you're you're afraid of something there afraid of being vulnerable w- with her and 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 what is it that I am afraid of? Either getting angry again or getting hurt uh, or both. Okay. Well, first getting hurt and then getting angry uh, again, which then it's like it's easier to avoid um, because then I I won't. The losses are less <laughs> compared to going in and with the with the intent of like doing something good and messing it up. So I don't want to be hurt, and that's one of the reasons so that I that I use a lot of anger to, and I'm trying to protect myself from being hurt, or by not being vulnerable. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, yeah. Okay, so it's, it, that's cool. Um, uh, and and well, you know, well stated. What, yeah, Matt. Yeah, just one one in one point there is that you may be describing resistance to being vulnerable. And David, you have an awesome list of twelve good reasons not to be vulnerable and express uh, your feelings. Yes, um, and we might want to attach that list to to this to this podcast. Thanks for the reminder. Um, and, and before you do your practice, I'll just sell people on this this list. It's free, so we're not selling anything, mm-hmm. although we are trying to sell something, trying to sell loving relationships, which doesn't seem to be a very easy sale these days with the world the way it is. But th- th- there's, uh, you know, the, the, the 12 secrets that we're trying to teach you, Mina, and we're trying to teach ourselves or teach our listeners, you can think of it as the EAR, a- empathy assertiveness and respect. Empathy is the listening skills, the the thought empathy, the feeling empathy, hearing the other person's feelings and and, and point of view. The A of the assertiveness is sharing your own feelings with I feel statements, what we were just talking about, Mina, you know, Shane, I I felt hurt when blah, blah, blah happened, uh, rather than screw you, asshole, uh, which is the alternative way of saying the same thing. and 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 then the R is respect is making loving loving statements to someone even when you're feeling hurt and angry with them to convey warmth and respect. It doesn't mean you have to hide, hide your anger. You shouldn't, but but to 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 share it in in a spirit of respect. 
and I have a, a wonderful list I compiled of 12 good reasons not to empathize. The, the, don't don't listen. Don't use the the you know the 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 empathy skills, and then 12 good reasons not to share your feelings, uh, to, uh, and then 12 good reasons not to treat the other person with respect. And that's the 36 reasons people resist love. You know, why we love to hate. That's one of the chapters in my book, Feeling Good t Together. You know, why Why do we not communicate in, 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 in a loving way? Well, there's your 36 reasons not, not to. And those are the reasons people really do, including you who are listening to the show. You really will resist using these techniques in conflict situations. Do, did I say that properly? I thought so. I thought that was brilliant. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think it's it is not necessarily only um, resistance, Matt. It's also like at the heat at the at the moment when I'm feeling either either anxious or angry. Those feelings, thoughts are not really available. Like I don't have the vocabulary to tap yeah. to that that right. So my point is, if you want to practice, or maybe even if you want to practice it in in my mind, it would be easier to imagine on the other side of the phone is Rhonda or or David or Matt, when I'm talking to my mom, when I'm starting the conversation, because it will flow a lot easier to imagine that my mom is sitting there hurt and angry and waiting to kind of hurt me back. So if I can take get rid of that image and kind of replace it with a loving, you know, receiving um, uh, image, it will, I would have an easier time to, to say what I intend I like to say. I like that idea. I have I have another idea to share with you, which is if I'm feeling like <clears throat> kind of a deer in the headlights or overwhelmed with yeah. my feelings of anxiety, and I'm kind of worried that I'm not going to do a good job, or like the like the words have kind of slipped out of my mind momentarily, I can just say that. And it's oftentimes uh, a relief just to say that and get it out mm -hmm. there. But I'm feeling kind of worried that I'm in a mind frame right now. I'm I'm feeling kind of upset and uh, like a deer in the headlights, and I'm worried I'm not going to do as good of a job of listening as I would like to. And sometimes yeah. just d disclosing those feelings is helpful for me, at least. Mm -hmm. I love oh, that. Awesome. I, mean, yeah. I love that, Matt. Yeah, I love it too. And maybe that's how I would start. So, like, let let me give you the shot. You know, I'll start okay. by saying, you know, <laughs> Mom, I I have been thinking about this for a very long time, and to be honest, I'm I'm quite worried and and um, anxious about having this conversation because I worry about um, making things, making, you know, saying things in a way that I don't intend to and making things worse. Uh, but um, I am, I want you to know that I, that I, that I love you and I, and I care about you. And, and when I, um, when I saw the, the loving message that came through, I, I, I felt so wonderful and, kind of safe and and relieved that you know we we can have uh, our loving conversations and um given all that was happening i wanted to i didn't want to respond quickly i wanted to respond in a way that's kind of kind you know like expresses my love to you back and um i i wonder you know i'm i'm worried that by me taking time you you know um you might have felt rejected and and you kind of showed your love and vulnerability and um rightfully so by not hearing back from me for a full day i might imagine how you might have also felt upset and and angry and unloved and again rejected for not hearing back from me and deleted the message to maybe even like not come across as, as clingy. Um, and I, I felt I was looking forward to coming home and, and writing the message to you. And I was I kind of, I felt hurt that I, that you deleted the message. Um, and I wonder how, how it might have been for you waiting for a whole day and and not hearing back from from me 
Can you tell me more about how it's how it was for you? It was very long. <laughs> so what grade do you give yourself on that? This was like a B. Mm-hmm. And, and then how, uh, how about you, Rhonda? Mm. I would give it an A minus. <clears throat> I thought you did a really great job with your I feel statements and feeling empathy. You did a great inquiry. I love how you said I felt wonderful, safe and relieved. I thought that was really beautiful and worried. We talk about the zero technique where we zero in on what the other person says and add zero. And I I got a little confused when you said maybe you deleted the message so that you didn't come across as clingy. So that must be coming out of your your long-term yeah. knowing each other she's yeah, your mother right but it was a little confusing as a listener um what was it maybe you deleted the message because you felt what because you didn't want to come across as clinging or clingy yeah yeah oh okay yeah you're making an interpretation as opposed mm-hmm. to just le- letting her her yeah. explain it yeah right yeah good how about you, Matt? I actually, I think I'm giving it a higher grade. I would go definitely an A, almost A plus. Um, I I wondered if um, mom was also maybe feeling kind of like hopeless or discouraged. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, that there that there wasn't a response, and that it might just be good for her to hear that. Uh, this is an extremely important relationship to you that you really want that type of closeness uh, and warmth and expression of love and vulnerable feelings in your relationship uh, yeah. with her that, and, and wondering if maybe she's, she felt kind of ho- hopeless in that moment that uh, that would be reciprocated and yeah. to acknowledge that like, that's something I feel too. Sometimes like I, sometimes it's hard for me to open up, and express to you how much I love you and how how much you mean to me, because I'm kind of worried that I'll get hurt uh, or that that won't be reciprocated. But that, yeah, yeah. I it kind of, I think the hurtful part is like I actually think that she truly believes that I hate her, um, or or I don't love her, or there's something there, you know. So it's just. Um, I don't know. It's it's a little hard. It's a little hurtful, um, and and sad to that thing that to think that my mom thinks that. Mm. Mina, I wonder if you could put that into this response, like when I didn't respond to you and as quickly as you know maybe would have been polite, or I, I waited a whole day to respond. I wonder if that kind of reinforced your belief that I hate you. Yeah. Could you say more about that? Yeah. We well, were getting a lot of uh, really great, great comments. It's surprising how much juice you can get out of an orange. <laughs> and uh, yeah. you, each, you're each adding uh, such, uh, such amazing d- dimensions d- to the thing. Uh, how, how, how is this feeling for, for you? Uh, you know, Part one was on the Sunday hike, and this is is part two. Why don't you tell us what you've liked, what you haven't liked, what's working, what's not working, how this experience is affecting you, Mina? It's um, I've I've loved all parts of it. It's um, it's also like it's amazing that again, the the more I practice, the kind of things come to me more naturally without feeling formulaic. Uh, it's almost like becoming a way of, of, of talking, which is, which is helpful in the beginning. It felt really fake. Um, I, I'm finding that getting into that part of myself where it feels like, again, vulnerable and like having those loving thoughts for myself and for, for my mom, both like, not just like, you know, I kind of almost like when I, decide to to be tough and strong I cut off myself from my own tender feelings but also tender feelings of other people it's almost like you you if you decide to be strong and rigid 
and not get hurt, uh, you also cut yourself from yourself uh, or your own tender feelings. So I think by opening up to my mom, I'm also opening up to myself in so many ways. Um, and maybe that's the first step, actually. And the other thing is, again, this is hard. You know, I'm getting help from it's like four of us brainstorming how to come up with a good response. So no wonder the world is in the shape that it is because it's hard to get things uh, right. And as, as as David, as you know, if you kind of make a mistake in the five secrets, sometimes you can it can backfire. And it doesn't mean that the five secret doesn't work. It's just really hard to get it right. It's hard not to put a jab in there or like, you know, have like a passive aggressive comment or like you said add interpretations into it so hard hard work yeah the the uh, you mentioned the uh, fear of, of being vulnerable uh, and and being hurt what what is the secret of human invulnerability how how does one become totally invulnerable not having a self well, that's true, but that's too abstract. <laughs> uh, people won't know what it means, but that's that's a, a, absolutely true. But from a practical point of view, like in By your being relation, vulnerable. Yeah, being totally vulnerable, you become totally invulnerable. Is, is mm -hmm. that right? Yeah. Uh, but why is that? It's... Uh... Yeah, because you have nothing to lose. And at the same time, there is my mom's voice in my head. Having grown up in a in a society where there is a lot of sadistic, psychopathic behaviors, one of the things that my mom always taught me is like, if you were caught by, like, by the moral guardians, never ever show fear or any vulnerability because people who have sadistic behaviors, they will enjoy that and they would... Mm -hmm. It would hurt you intentionally to get more of that out of you. So I have really learned to when I'm scared or when I'm like feeling like to kind of shut myself down as a way of not getting hurt more. And I think it takes even more effort to to get there and to be um, vulnerable. It takes it takes practice. So I, I appreciate by being vulnerable with loved ones. That's when you become. Uh, you know, invulnerable, but at the same time, there is this other part of me has been that has been well, touched. Let's check that it. out with the fear of fantasy. I thought we were done, but let's take it one more step. I'll be okay. Mina, and you can be the mother from hell, and and <laughs> and you believe that something awful will happen if you become completely vulnerable. Okay. So I'll try to become completely vulnerable, and then you can be the mother from hell, not like Oof. a real mother, and, and okay. say the worst imaginable things to try, try to make my worst fear come true, okay? Okay, sounds good. Yeah. Well, Mom, I just wanted you to know that uh, when I saw your note in the morning, it was so loving. It brought such joy to my heart because I, I, I do love you so much, and then when when you took it down at the end of the day, you know, I was tied up all day and I wanted to give some good thoughts so I could send you a beautiful message. And then when I came back to do it, I saw that you'd taken it down and, and I felt so hurt and, and, and disappointed. And, and I just wanted to share that with you. But I was also wondering if maybe when I hadn't responded right away, if, if, if you, if you, if that, if you felt hurt or, or thought I was maybe uh, ignoring you or, not not being loving, you know, because you're you are often seeing that you have this angry daughter. So I was wondering if that was happening again. Well, yeah, I mean, if you you know, you are such a hateful, um, angry person and vindictive, and uh, but that's also not the reason that I deleted. I told you why I deleted it. So both are correct that you are a hateful, angry person, and and also that I told you I did it by mistake. There wasn't anything more than that. Yeah. Um, when you say that I'm hateful, angry, and vindictive, uh, you know, there's so much tr truth in that. And and I think I've, I've been a very difficult 
person to to get close to and a hard daughter to that I haven't often shown my love and I kind of protect myself with my anger and not showing you how much I really do love you and I can imagine how how much you've hurt and how how much I've hurt you for so many years ever since I was a little girl and I just feel profoundly sad to 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 see to 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 have to say that and and it it hurts me because I love you so much to see how much I've really failed you over and over again. Uh, I, I I appreciate your opening up and telling me that. And can you tell me more about it and how you're feeling just at this, at this very moment, mom? That was, that was amazing and awesome. Um, yeah, but there was a great disarm there by, by disarming basically and agreeing with me uh i i don't have to push back anymore i don't have to prove to you that you know that you are you know like unloving and and mean um you already accepted it and you're willing to hear more from me about like my experiences and how it's been for you so that go again you became you became invulnerable in that, that yeah. way yeah was that helpful to say that very helpful yeah why? Yeah, I think that's a huge part to even again to start with that part to kind of um now now I kind of again disagree perhaps with the first part where we said in the disarming for the first part to to talk about um how I took the side of the other person. I think this would be the disarming part that I would say sure. because my mom had just told me that I hate I, I do have to lead with this um for it to really um allow the open conversation that I agree with you. I have been, you know, um, unloving and, you know, mean. I agree with her, with her statements. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and what happens when you agree with it? Then, uh, well, there is, there kind of creates a sense of warm and a safe, safer place for her to share her, her feelings. Um, And, um, so you're saying that you should agree that you've been hateful, angry, and vindictive. That's right. a good thing to agree with. Why, how can that be? Well, for one thing, that that is that in so many ways her perception uh, that is how she's feeling. So that's that's her reality. We should by agreeing with her, I'm on the same side as her, and we can have a conversation instead of. But it's more than saying, agreeing that she feels this way. It's agreeing that it's true and ultimate reality. Yeah, yeah. And that is too. Also, again, I have not been very kind to to her in, in the way that, uh, yeah, I haven't been. So it is it is true that I have been angry and upset with her for a very long time. And, so, and then when when you agree with it, why does it disappear? Because she doesn't have to prove to me her point anymore. Right. Um, but when you agree that you've been hateful, angry, and vindictive, why does she suddenly conclude that you, you're actually very loving? Because I have heard and understood her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're responding yeah. in a very loving way. Right. Um, because yeah. you're taking yourself out of the equation. You're putting yeah. yourself completely in your mom's situation and you're really seeing the world from your mom's eyes yeah. and you're not involved with it it's really your mom's experience that you're disarming yeah. and you're seeing do yeah. you think yeah and again that element of part of that being true as well uh, i mean i do love my mom but it is my anger and frustration with her is also very real so if to her that means being hateful, then then again, the element of me not being loving towards her or, you know, feeling upset is is true. So I'm worried about the time for for both both sides. Well, we could do a role reversal on the on the on the feared fantasy because she hasn't been in the the receiving role. Okay, let's do that. And then for homework, you can maybe have a dialogue with your mom and then send us an email before the podcast is published so that our listeners will see what, what actually happens. Is that okay? 
That sounds good, yes. Okay, so I'm I'm the mother from hell. Are you ready? Okay, I am ready. Hey, I just want to remind you, Amina, in case you'd forgotten, that you've always been so hateful, angry, and, and vindictive. Every time I've interacted with you from 10 seconds after you were born, you popped out of the birth canal and you started sneering at me right away. <laughs> In fact, you were screaming. <laughs> you no, know, you're right. There are pictures of that. Yeah, of me screaming when I was born. So, um, you know, you're 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 right, Mom. I I have been um, um, angry and and uh, and vindictive and uh, and kind of um, uh, snappy with you um, for for as long as I as I remember, and I can imagine how, you know hurtful and how how hurt upset angry stuck disappointed unloved rejected you might feel um and i i, I kind of i feel ashamed uh for for being unloving and you deserve to you have you've you've put so much love and effort into the you know to and care um to towards me and again when i um um and i and i wonder if you can share with me how how it's been like for you to to live with with me for such a long time and experience these um outbursts of of uh of anger and frustration that's great i'd give you like an a minus on it because i would have had a little stroking you know it um, like I, you can com combine that with that the i feel statement i'm really ashamed to, to hear you say that mom because it's so true and 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 i i wouldn't feel so bad about it if i didn't love you so much and, and mm. to see how i've failed you know over and over again to show you my my love yeah and i can imagine that that's been de devastating for, for you and if you want to tell me what it's been like to 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 be a mother this child screaming from birth on <laughs> i would i'm ready to listen uh, uh, and, uh, and, uh, because I, I, I'm just excited to hear you open up because he, he, although it's painful, even this uh, makes me feel so much closer to, to you. How's that? I, love that? I love that. I, um, I really like that part of, um, the, the second, the last part about, um, I love you and how devastated it's been. It's been for you. Uh, I think that's really, really true. Uh, you know, it's true that I haven't expressed my love uh, to you and how de devastating it's been. I think that's really true. It's all very true, which makes it even nicer to like, yeah. it just feels so good to say the truth, you know? Yeah, yeah right. It's, li it's liberating. But that's why, as you say, you've got to have a self out there because if you think, oh, I... I if I screwed up as a daughter, then I'm a bad person. I'm a bad daughter, you know. And then, and then you get into denial and anger and putting up a wall. A bad again. human, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, this has been beautiful. Uh, I appreciate the way you're sharing yourself so openly. I hope our listeners understand, at least some of them, the you know the power in in what you're saying and and how 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 much courage it. it it might have taken has has it taken courage to open up like this yeah i yeah as i was talking about some of this like oh my gosh like what would people think about me as they are listening to um to the to the podcast in particular when i'm like part of me is like even resistant to kind of uh, agreeing to the, the disarming part because it's like oh no no everybody who knows me or like you know listeners would think wow like what a horrible person Hateful yeah. person she is. Yeah. Well, we might have lost Matt, but you could ask Rhonda. Rhonda, do you do you think I'm a hateful, vindictive, unloving person? <laughs> well, yes, I'm, I do. <laughs> I'm so happy that you asked me that, uh, Mina, because throughout this entire conversation, all I hear is the love that you have for your mother. 
Awesome. Yeah. I'm glad to hear that. How about you, David? You know me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I judge you. I, I judge you real bad. I'm going to start spreading the word. I, I just think you've been awesome, and I, you, you've been beautiful and loving and open and courageous and vulnerable. And yeah. I, I just feel so, so much warmth, uh, so much love for you, so much admiration and respect for you. And the feeling uh, is mutual. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. David asked you if you if it took courage. I think you ex- displayed a, a lot of courage in the willingness to be as vulnerable as you've been. And even saying that it's easier to do that with us than it would be to your mother took courage. And and the willingness to take on David's homework of having this conversation with your mother and letting us know takes gumption. Yeah. <laughs> and you I can encourage that. her to listen to the to the podcast too. Yep, I will. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, yes. Awesome. awesome. <laughs> wow. Way to go. That's Way awesome. To go. Well, thank you yeah. all for listening. And thank, thank you, Rhonda. You. And thank you, oh. uh, Mina. Thank you, thank David. Thank you, Rhonda and, and David. Yeah. Thank you. Really awesome that you volunteered to come. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye. This has been another episode of the Feeling Good podcast. For more information, visit Dr. Burns website at feelinggood.com where you will find the show notes under the podcast page. You will also find archives of previous episodes and many resources for therapists and non-therapists. We welcome your comments and questions. If you want to support the show, please share the podcast with people who might benefit from it. You could also go to iTunes and leave a five-star rating. I am your host, Rhonda Borowski, the director of the Feeling Great Therapy Center. We hope you enjoyed this episode. I invite you to join us next time for another episode of the Feeling Good Podcast.